Welcome back to Batman No Man's Land. This is the storyline that we started up a while ago here at Comic Storian, and due to various scheduling issues, we were unable to complete it. Now it's time to actually get back into it, and we're going to be doing a lot of these stories back to back to try and complete this whole entire arc relatively soon. Today, we're going to be telling the story of Harold, one of the individuals that helps Batman rebuild and fix things that he breaks. The story of the Joker and why he's been in hiding, and the story of Alfred and what he's done. But let's go ahead and continue the story of No Man's Land. And if you like this, please consider subscribing to our channel and joining us on a weekly basis or pseudo weekly basis. We have to skip a week or two, but a pseudo weekly basis to continue the storyline. This is the Comic Story channel where we take your favorite pop culture storylines and lore from video games to movies to comic books. And we break them down into an audio drama so you know what's going on. Hope you enjoy. As the world crumbles around him, Harold thinks of his mother when the earthquakes began. Her cold, icy voice rising into a scream, telling him to get out of her sight. Get out! Those are the last words to him before Gotham fell. He doesn't know what happened, just that it was bad. He pulls himself out of the rubble, seeing Batman's things broken, and then he finds his tool belt, which is good. He has a lot of work to do, and when he works, he's happy. He begins to work on the Batmobile, and Alfred tells him not to even bother. Even though Harold can't speak, Alfred understands him, but it is broken. Harold is the individual in this timeline that has been helping Batman with his tools and keeping things up and running. So Alfred sighs, stating that he knows, but there are more important matters that concerns him and Harold. More important than fixing things, Harold thought to himself. But then, what should he do? Alfred tells him, please, just go away until he calls him. So Harold's mother's voice rings out in his mind and Harold leaves. He has not seen daylight since Batman brought him into the cave, but that was of his own choice. He hardly notices the strange feeling of the breeze hitting his face because it feels like he's leaving the only home that he's ever known. With nothing else to do, Harold takes his tools and he walks. There's nothing else to do. Batman's not here anymore. But that's when Harold sees it. A city. A whole city. Broken. Needing to be fixed. So Harold begins to run because he knows he has a lot of work to do. And when he works, Harold's happy. The Joker stands in frustration, trying to figure out what to do. He can't poison the water supply because the water supply is already polluted. He can't foul the air because the air is already soot soup. He can't terrorize the citizens because the citizens are already scared out of their gourds. Their city has fallen. And on top of that, he's lonely. Ever since he left Arkham Asylum, he's been waiting for him, like a puppy waiting for its master. He even went ahead and built this giant extra special death trap for him. It's got knives and bullets and explosives and acid and oh, the lasers! <laughs> I love the lasers! But is Batman going to be so unmannerly cruel and forget his old pals? Well, then they'll just have to make him come. Meanwhile, at the Gotham City docks, Azriel looks at a human figure imprint in the snow where the man that he fought, Kellebex, fell. He pushed the monster over the ledge, but it would seem that Kellebex landed in this snowbank. He's still probably injured, but clearly not enough to stop him from escaping. The tracks are leading north, and that's where he needs to go. As Azriel studies the area, Batman asks, Did you lose something? Azriel explains the situation with Kellebex, but... Azrael is on his own mission. So Batman tells him first, before locating Kellebex, you have to find the Joker. He's somewhere north. Azrael thinks to himself, well, Kellebex headed in that direction, so maybe I'll get lucky and run into the both of them. If only meeting a pair of ruthless, sadistic, merciless, homicidal maniacs would be considered lucky. So Azrael searches all day, passing by former hospital inmates released into the world because those who took care of them fled the city. A dull anger grows inside of him at the sight of that. There should have been a better job done of getting these people out, or the caretakers didn't care. As Azrael passes through the alleyway, a woman stops him asking, Are you Batman? Azrael tells her, No, I'm uh, one of his helpers. Why? The woman tells him, Well, there was a clown a little while ago. He told me that if I saw Batman to tell him the Joker is waiting in Forest Park, are you sure you're not Batman? Azrael hurries off telling her, I'm sure, but don't worry. I'll be back, hopefully. Meanwhile, over in the park, the Joker shouts asking, Where is he? I put the word out, squandered jelly beans like they were a hundred dollar bills. And I'm still here right now waiting. In the old days, he would pop up when he wasn't wanted, but now he's Mr. Nowhere. The Joker eats a handful of his jelly beans with a young boy asking, Can I get out of here now? 
Joker tells him, of course not. The Joker's enforcer asks, why do we have a kid in a trap? I mean, wasn't it meant for? And the Joker shouts, you idiot. A man would think that you just got out of the loady bin. Well, actually, that isn't far from the truth, but that's besides the point. Let me run it down for you. Batman is going to show up to rescue Sweetums here, and when he does, the bars are going to come down and lock him inside. Then the spring-loaded blades are going to shoot out from every angle, machine guns are going to fire, acid sprays from the floor, and laser beams crisscross the whole area. Finally, for the big finish, six pounds of plastic explosives. Next stop, Cratersville! <laughs> The enforcer asks, what about the kid? The Joker tells him, well, when you fish for a trout, do you worry about the worm? Just then, the Joker hears a voice telling him, release the boy. Joker spins back yelling, he hasn't stood me up yet. Now, I know you're gonna have to go rescue the boy, but first, there's a custom we must honor. Go beat him up, boys. The enforcer runs forward yelling, gotcha, Joker. A second later, the enforcer's thrown back with a bloody nose. Joker then says, okay, now that we got that out of the way, time to move on to. And that's when Azriel steps out of the shadows, telling him, I don't have time for games. And the Joker's shocked, he's stunned, he yells, wait, you're not him. He sent some sleazy replacement. I'm, I'm a little hurt. No, this cannot be. You're not worthy of my genius. Did I mention how hurt I am? Okay, so here's the deal. You can either crawl into one of those pipes over there or the kid gets snapped faster forever. Azrael thinks to himself that he could drop the Joker easy. The Joker could be bluffing about the boy, but he isn't. With no other choice, Azrael climbs into one of the pipes nearby and the Joker's enforcer wields one side shut. As he finishes that one side, Azrael begins to throw his weight into the side of the pipe and he ends up rolling down the hill. As the Joker goes on telling him, I'm, I'm still really, really hurt. Like, he sent a... Why... Me and Batman, we have a thing? The Enforcer returns and the Joker asks, Are you done already? The Enforcer tells him, Well, not exactly. The pipe went into the river. And the Joker says, But both sides were sealed up, right? Right! The Enforcer tells him, Well, half of it was. So the Joker starts laughing, telling him, That's, <laughs> that's, that's fine! But, but what I would like you to do now is crawl into the trap and get Sweetums. The Enforcer asks, Wouldn't I get sliced up and shot up? And the Joker asks, would I really do that? But before the Enforcer could climb into the trap, he's grabbed and punched again. Azrael tells him, Batman told me to nail the Joker. Nail him hard. And the Joker laughs. <laughs> he does care! So as Azrael gets ready to hit him, the boy then asks, Can I go now? It's getting cold in here. Azrael watches as the Joker runs away, and he gets ready to follow. But then he stops and he tells the boy, Sure. I'll get you out of here. Later by the nearby church, Azrael takes his mask off, stating that he failed. It took him four hours to figure out how to disarm the trap, and by the time he was done, the Joker was gone. But Batman tells him, No, you saved the child's life. That is no failure. When we do the things that we do, we must choose between vengeance and compassion. The choice you made, it was the right one, John Paul. Azrael does not know what to say, whether to smile or merely nod. But by the time that he decides, Batman is already gone. And then, he moved slowly into the cold morning, determined to finish his quest, to find Nick Scratch and Kellebex. Once upon a time, there was a noble knight who had always fought for the people of his land. The knight had a squire who served him faithfully, and more often than not, without question. The young boy scoffs, asking, so this squire is just a dork? Who would believe this old geezer? And then he hits the young girl next to him. Alfred grabs the boy by the nose, pulling out a bouquet of flowers, telling him, if you wish to win a young lady's affections, you must start with flowers. He gives the young girl the flowers, and he clears his throat, stating, Now, where was I? Oh, yes. The squire served the knight. The relationship was somewhat of a partnership. The squire was proud to serve the knight, but then calamity came over the kingdom, and the knight's castle was destroyed. A great evil fell upon the land, and the people needed a knight more than ever before. But the knight, struck with the loss of his kingdom, retreated to end to the wounds of his soul. Many asked, where did he go? Why has he forsaken his land? What they did not know nor even the knight, was that he could never leave the land behind. That it would take the knight time to realize this. So now, our story must follow the squire. A knight would return the squire, though, but with his lineage. He stepped out into the world to do what he can until the knight's arrival. He did what he could to help those in need, relying more on his brain than brawn. The squire used his knowledge of medicine to aid those who were hurt. But 
there was something else the squire was good at, and that was being a spy. He charted the lands, drawing maps, and he watched. And he watched for a long time. The young boy then shouts, Boring! What kind of a lame story is this? Didn't the squire do anything? And Alfred asks, Would you rather hear about how the squire fought in the knight's stead? And the boy tells him, Well, that would be something at least. So Alfred tells him, Very well. There was a time when he fought. He did. Try. The squire saw a group of bad people capturing a group of men and women and thought back to when he would have left this sort of thing to the knight. But without him there, the squire knew that he couldn't idly stand by. The squire's stomach would twist and turn as he snuck up, not knowing what could happen. He attacked, leaving only the brute to deal with. Fortunately for the squire, though, the brute was not the sharpest stick in the bundle. While the brute rampaged in search of the squire, the squire quietly freed those captured. But the brute returned, quartering the squire as the people fled. The brute clearly overpowered the squire, and he was knocked down, and he expected that he would die. But that's when the knight returned. He defeated the brute with ease, telling the man that he shall never touch his squire again. Alfred then bows, telling his listeners, Thank you. And the young boy yells, Wait! That's not an ending! And Alfred picks up his bags, telling him, Of course not. It is but a beginning. And now it is time for bed. As Alfred quietly sneaks away into the shadows, he opens up a secret passage. And Bruce asks him, How's the arm? Alfred tells him, compared to the injuries that he's endured, tis but a scratch. And Batman tells him, good, starting tomorrow, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. And there you have it, three more stories within the Batman No Man's Land story arc. Now, if you subscribe to the channel, next we're going to be talking about Zaz and where Zaz went missing. Then we're going to find out why has Superman not been helping out the city. And then we're going to talk about Batman working with Jim and the new Batgirl. And then... We're going to see what's going on with Azrael and if he can find the Joker. That will be the next video. So we're going to be doing a lot of these little stories in big chunks now so you guys can enjoy them. And I do apologize for how long it took me to get back to Batman No Man's Land. The core reason behind that is it was not getting good views. And according to YouTube, if I kept putting it out, they would stop letting people find the channel. But... We seemingly have fixed that for now, so let's finish this up while we have YouTube's algorithm on our side, shall we? Go ahead and subscribe to the channel, watch as many videos as you can so that we don't lose traction again, and I appreciate every single one of you for doing that. Don't forget you can subscribe to the channel to get notifications by hitting that bell. Comic books are great, but you know what else I have a huge passion for? Video games. And you can join me almost every night of the week at twitch.tv slash eligiblemonster at about 9 p.m. Eastern when I go live. If you join me over there, we'll be playing games from Final Fantasy XIV, Warframe, Elder Scrolls Online, or whatever weird horror game I feel like pulling out. And basically, we hang out and do a lot of fun stuff over there with the entire community. You can also join me on Mondays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern where we do our podcast, Conspiracy Cast, and Comic Story and Weekly, and Comics Experiment. Hope to see you there. It's a lot of fun, and I'm going to stop this rambling.